Hey everybody. I like my free speech. As you know, in essence, it just means that people should be able to voice their opinions freely, whatever they may be. Bite me. Isn't free speech great? Most people think so, which is why it's got its own article in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It's also the reason many of us get very upset when someone tries to silence us. Criticizing authority, criticizing the big guy, or criticizing anybody is a human right. Free speech is all about the little guy's voice, yours and mine, and we're not supposed to be persecuted or prosecuted for it. Funny how infringements on these rights just sneak up on us. And that's exactly how the people pulling the strings want it. So recently I've been doing some research. I've been reading up on food disparagement laws, or as they're more commonly known, veggie libel laws. They're so sinister, it's delicious. And I'm going to tell you all about them. In 1996, Oprah got sued for violating the recently passed veggie libel law in Texas. We would like to do a show called Dangerous Food. Could it happen here? I did not go on the Oprah show to say something that I knew to be false. I went there to inform people about the practices that we were doing in factory agriculture, grinding up cows and feeding them to cows. Now, Oprah, when she heard this, she turned to the man from the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and said, are we feeding cows to cows? As he said, well, a limited amount of that is going on. Oprah was horrified, and she said, It has just stopped me cold from eating another burger. She got sued for millions of dollars by the Texas cattlemen for saying that. Veggie libel laws emerged in the 1990s in response to an herbicide scare that affected the sale of apples in 1989. CBS had aired a report that resulted in a massive drop in sales. Apple growers filed a lawsuit against CBS, but the Supreme Court refused to hear the case. The food companies learned a profound lesson then, that statements suggesting that a product was unsafe could reduce sales, and badly. Two years later, the governor of Colorado vetoed a bill that was sponsored by an apple grower who was still being affected by the sales. The bill would have allowed food producers to sue people who falsely disparaged their products. At the time, it just seemed silly. I mean, you remember good old President George Bush? He once said that he hated broccoli and that he wasn't going to eat it anymore. The governor recognized that such comments could hypothetically adversely affect food sales, but said that constitutional protection gives individuals, as well as consumer groups and researchers, the guaranteed right to raise legitimate questions about food safety and quality. But the food industry lobbyists are a powerful machine, and between 1991 and 1997, they succeeded in actually inducing 13 states to pass veggie libel laws. Which is why Oprah got sued. She won, but her legal fees were said to have exceeded one million dollars. So even if she won, very few could follow in her footsteps. And the food industry thereby managed to silence anybody who was thinking about speaking up or voicing their opinions about the controversial practices of food companies. A few other cases you might remember are um, the British McLibel suit where Greenpeace got sued or Chiquita Banana versus the Cincinnati Inquirer, which basically scared other newspapers into silence. Those and other cases illustrate how easy it is to ensnare someone in costly and time-consuming litigation, typically without any possibility for successful defendants to recover attorney's fees, thereby reducing the likelihood of organizations publishing hard-hitting stories that provide information that Americans need to make informed decisions. In the U.S., 4,000 people get a heart attack every day. One-third of Americans succumb to cancer. And we all know that diabetes is a fact of life for many people mostly poor people. One in three Americans born after 2000 will get diabetes. And you know what? It's not all genetics. It's not all our immediate environment. Part of it is on our plate. The food system is so skewed that only bad calories are affordable because of subsidized commodity crops. It is commonly known that the biggest predictor of obesity is income level. We are hardwired to like salt, fat, and sugar, and the industry has taken advantage of this with no responsibility. With veggie libel laws, we have effectively eliminated the possibility of questioning food companies that are advertising and selling us the stuff. If you criticize them, you run the risk of being sued for millions of dollars. In Colorado, it's even a felony. You could go to jail for questioning food safety.
It has just stopped me cold from eating another burger. One million dollars in legal fees. Now who's going to risk that? These laws exist for the sole purpose of silencing media coverage of a critical issue. Haven't you ever stopped and wondered why media stopped looking critically at, for example, mad cow disease? We've started letting huge corporations literally have the legal definition of persons, including many of the protections of persons, among them the very important free speech. In recent years, this has meant massive expansions in commercial free speech while diminishing real people's free speech. Nature, the environment, animals, you have no protection from these corporations. You have no standing. Imagine you were a movie critic, and suddenly there was a law that said you couldn't say that the movie sucked. Well, that's the way it is for food, and you're allowing it. Currently, there are farm states trying to make it illegal to publish a photo of any feedlot operation. In California and Michigan, industry is pushing to get more of these laws on the books. Abusive litigation practices are embraced by the courts, and they're costing people millions. Your interests as a consumer are of no interest. Were you to comment on the health dangers of bacteria in meats and poultry, the threat of bacterial infection from raw oysters, sulfites in salads, nitrates in bacon and other processed foods, cholesterol in eggs, fat in milk and meat, food dyes, polluted fish, pesticide-treated foods, non-pasteurized juices, among many other examples? In states with veggie libel laws, you could subject yourself to a lawsuit. And we're not just talking people here. Organizations like the American Cancer Society or the American Heart Association are in the same boat as you. The message is clear. You better keep your opinions to yourself. And as if it wasn't bad enough with these 13 states that actually have these laws, these laws also have a national impact. They subject internet users to runaway liability. For example, if a public interest group made statements on its website about food and toxic waste, it might well be sued in any and all of the 13 states that have these laws, even if the group has no other contact with these states whatsoever. We are getting contaminated meat, vegetables, crappy, unhealthy food from these corporations. The FDA are too tied to these organizations to do anything about it. The regulatory agencies are today completely toothless. And the health guidelines for the public are incredibly deceptive, tainted by lobbies with money in the amounts you can't even imagine. In 2005, four companies controlled 80% of the market. Cargill, Tyson, Smithfield, ConAgra, they control it all. And the corporations don't worry about the comfort of their workers either, because they're temporary. Just like the animals. They're poor people that can't afford to quit. The corporation Tyson won't allow unions. They hire illegal immigrants in the most unethical ways imaginable. First, NAFTA put 1.5 million Mexican workers out of business. Now guess who's hiring them. The government cracks down on the workers, but never the company that hires them. They get rid of 15 workers a day in a deal with immigration, all to get the cheapest price of food. The business world is overflowing with brochures and workshops showing companies how to sue critics for defamation. Lawyers call these suits slaps, strategic lawsuits against public participation. A judge was quoted saying this. These laws are aimed at consumer activists, environmental groups, and the media. And they are controlled by the people who bring us pesticides, genetic engineering, radiation, and every other kind of environmental problem you can imagine. Agricultural producers do not need special statutory protection against false and damaging speech concerning their products. The common law provides adequate means for this. The bottom line is, non-commercial statements regarding food and safety represent a vital part of the political discourse. Veggie libel laws censor an open discussion by diminishing the amount of information available in the open marketplace of ideas. The First Amendment doesn't say we can speak critically about the government, but not to businesses. And we wouldn't have to speak so critically if businesses would stop feeding dead animals to live ones, putting non-food substances in food, tinkering with genetic codes, and spraying the countryside with poisons. Speak up 
for free speech. Do not let them silence you. Reclaim the First Amendment. You vote every single time you eat. Do your homework and ask for better products where you buy your food. And speak up. Protest in your town, on your blog, on your channel. Mirror this video. Tell people. Scrutinize your own legal system. And let's get rid of these laws once and for all. You decide what your free speech is worth. A lot more than money is at stake.